This is the Wii Viewer. And the Little Wii Viewer. And we're going to review... 88 Heroes, 98 Heroes Edition. Which is a little weird. Why don't they just call it 98 Heroes? Because 88 Heroes is the original game. Did you ever play that one? No. What did you think of this one? It was alright. It was a pretty standard platformer with a cute gimmick. This game story revolves around the number 8 like crazy. So basically, you have 88 minutes to beat every level in this game. Each level, you only have 88 seconds with 88 Heroes to do it. There are 88 levels. Yes. So many 88s. If you can think of an 88, yeah, that's part of it. You have to collect 88 coins to get another life. This takes place in 1988. So this is basically just a platformer. An okay one at that. The whole gimmick to this thing is that you have a different character to play every single time you're playing a level. And the characters can range from super powerful to completely worthless. Well, the whole point is that whenever you die, you switch and it's involuntary. So you don't really get a choice into what you play as. My favorite character was a, uh, like a lucky uh, person. A flip a coin heads, you get to the end of the level, flip a coin tails, you die. It's that simple. I mean, you could speed through this game in the fastest time just by keep doing that if you go lucky enough to get hurt at the very end. So there's all kinds of weird characters you get to play as, but they're all like jokes. Which was fun though, they all had their own backstories, which I'm not going to get into. They weren't really that important, they were just kind of like, ha ha ha, here's how they got their powers, let's move on. Basically a lot of homages to other characters you might know. All the Ninja Turtles showed up. I got to play as Rick Astley. And he's never going to give you up. He just slides around and it's amazing. But he's actually not that bad. He's not that good either, he's just kind of average. I mean, about half the characters kind of just control the same, where they just have the ability to move, and then attack a short distance in front of them in a variety of different ways. They do just kind of play about the same. There are little things you're like, oh, I'm controlling this guy. So his attack goes a little bit farther or his jump is a little bit higher or he floats. There are some really hard ones to control, like the Harlem Globetrotter. His sprite is so big and you only have one shot, really, because if you lose that ball he's carrying, you're not getting it back. Yeah, and then there are other ones that are just, like, super cool. The Bat Bot. If you saw my live playing this game, you know how much I love Bat Bot. Time only moves moves when he's moving and he can fly through the entire level so technically you could cheat your way through this entire game using Batbot if that's the very last character that you have at the end of the game when you run out of characters you basically have to play the game with the very last character that you have I think my favorite was the zombie where instead of attacking you just drop your head once you die you just respawn at the head no lives lost that also might mean that you're starting back at the beginning of the level if that's where you drop ah, your head. that's the risk versus reward. And you also have 88 seconds, so you can't really be messing around with it too much, but it does give you a little more leeway. I mean, it's better than dying. There was also the snail where you could go on the ceilings. There's a lot of people. And a lot of worthless ones, too. I mean, there's some that was constantly jumping. It's like, oh, come on. How am I supposed to control this? Or one that has the controls backwards. Or the chicken. Ugh, the chicken. The one that drops the egg? Yep. Or how about the girl made of glass? Where you've got to be very, very, very careful where you're jumping. If you fall down too much, she'll break. If you do a double jump, which is her power, you break. It seems a little unfair there. But what I did like was that since you're playing as different characters, the way you platform through levels might be different. There's multiple ways to get to the exit of each level. Yeah, I think my favorite thing about this game is that it's not afraid to just be, like, abused by its own design. And the fact that, like, a character can just fly and just reach the end, no questions. Yeah, you can smash through walls if you want. Maybe they'll break the walls. Maybe they'll just use a ladder to move up and do whatever the heck they want. It doesn't really care. That's a good thing. It gives it a lot of replayability. The evil person's watching your characters on cameras. I thought that was a cool gimmick, but sometimes the characters in the background would get in the way. So I'm like, hey, come on. I'm just trying to platform here. Okay, so there's some new modes in here. Solo and Magnificent 8. Basically, Solo is one character that you go through all these levels. Magnificent 8 is you choose eight characters you want to take with you to try and beat the game. It is pretty cool, especially if like you want to try out a special character that just died instantly. And you're like, well, that's not very good. Well, there's the practice mode, but I never enjoyed the practice mode in this. It's like, just practice it in the actual levels. There's also H8 mode. It's hate mode. That's great, mate. It's basically eight new levels that they made for the Switch. They're unlocked after you beat the first 22 levels. Because uh, this game is broken down into four sections. At the end of the 21st level, you get to boss battle at the 22nd level. 88 Heroes, 98 Heroes Edition. Little wee viewer, would you buy, rent, sale, or skip? It's $30. Sale? How much would you ask for it? This isn't a disc game, is it? It's a retail game, yeah. Oh, so you can rent it. Yeah. 
Oh. I did. Never mind then. I would probably rent it because this is definitely one of those games that you wouldn't come back to. Well, there's a lot of replayability in the different levels. There is replayability, but it's one of those things where it's just like, would I go back to this game or would I just beat it in a weekend, have the fun now, and then just like be done with it? I agree with you. It's a rent. Unless you can find it for like $10. I didn't like the level design. I thought they were so simplistic. Well, that was kind of the point. I didn't find the levels fun to replay. I just found them, you know, okay. When I play a platformer, I like to enjoy what I'm doing. This is more of like a, I'm just trying to get to the end. There's not a lot of enjoyment in the actual platforming levels. It's the enjoyment is with the characters. So I agree with you. I think this game, you should just rent it.